Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we are going to take a close look at the Philips CDI. I can still remember as a kid when I was going to the video store, there was a demo pod over there. It was showing basically one particular game. The game they were showing was Hotel Mario and as a child looking at it I was not impressed because the competition was quite fierce with different brands out there like destroying each other and Philips CDI was just in the middle. The development of the CDI began in the late 80s and was officially released in December 1991 in Europe and later in other regions including North America and Japan. Philips wanted to create something that was a combination of a game system but it also could play CDs and you can watch your video CDs. Where this system is quite unique because it had official Nintendo IPs, it did have a lack of game titles. Despite of the multimedia capabilities, the CDI really struggled to gain popularity as a game console. I can still remember where I was going to, let's say a fellow gamer, he had one of them in his possession. And even seeing the controllers and everything else, I was not impressed as a child. So a lot of cool IPs and a lot of weird games. I must say that this was a system that had a lot of potential. But the question also remains, how is it now? Because if you're looking at everything, some of the like very appealing expects, for example, with the certain kind of games they released on it, is it really worth picking up? Because the prices, when you're looking on the internet, they have been skyrocketing. The CDI also came with a lot of different peripherals. One of them, of course, are the controllers. There is also like a trackball mouse, but I don't have it for the video. The controller came with it, there was this particular one, the three button version. What I do like is it's very comfortable when it comes to the overall form factor. But what I don't like is absolutely the D-pad. That thing is absolutely horrendous. But then you also have this second version. I'm just going to call this the Philips CDI arcade controller because it's very flat and even has some special rubberized knots at the bottom over here. You can remove the joystick and make it a normal controller. And this thing is less comfortable, but it has a so much better D-pad. And this thing is quite comfortable. And they made absolutely cool pieces of peripherals. One of them is the Philips CDI Peacekeeper Revolver. Man, it came absolutely with a big cable nightmare. But what you can do with this is just play your light gun games. But the technology behind it, that's something we're going to talk about in a different video and deep dive into the light gun situation of the CDI. The CDI you see over here is not mine to keep because I have a special guest today. Mr. Port came with a CDI collection and shown it here on the channel. Because also this is not your typical CDI player. Let's introduce Mr. Port and he will explain what is going on with this device. Thank you for having me. So what we are looking at here is the infamous uh, Philips CDI player. Now this specific model is a professional model. It's a 660 uh, model. They are quite rare and different to the retail models. Uh, for example, we do have two controller ports in the front, which are uh, typically in the back with most retail models. There are uh, many retail models. We're not even going to go into those uh, because Philips uh, was crazy and made a million of them. So let's just focus on this specific 660 model. So this model specifically was used uh, in development studios to test CDI games and mainly in businesses to uh, use as a kiosk uh, and a display unit. So the differences uh, compared to the retail are, uh, well, the controller ports I already said, but we also have the built-in MPEG uh, card decoder. Uh, so you can play VCD games and many CDI games actually support it. Uh, MPEG uh, to enhance the video capabilities. So some games will be enhanced and some games, some games actually do not play at all without the MPEG module. The MPEG module was an add-on on the retail models that you could buy separately. And here again, it is uh, internal and it's built in. So uh, other uh, differences are uh, this unit uh, works uh, worldwide, 100 volts to 240 volts. Uh, it is 50 and 60 hertz uh, and uh, funny note it's actually made in Belgium even though it's a Dutch brand uh, a Dutch console it the factory used to be in Belgium and, and these were all created in Belgium now personally I would say the CDI player is uh, worth purchasing uh, uh, nowadays uh, just for the simple fact of uh, the games are so bad that they're actually good 
Um, if you are into full motion video games, FMV games, they are actually the best on the CDA uh, player since it does support MPEG where Sega CD, 3DO, Amiga CD, 32 uh, and those consoles actually had very bad video quality. Here things look uh, well as good as they get for the 90s right so basically vhs slash video cd quality uh, besides that there are some uh, quirky games like zelda games which are uh, infamously bad to play uh, but just for the fact that they are on the cdi uh, philips player uh, they are actually quite cool to experience uh, even if it's just uh, for torturing yourself and having a laugh with your friends same for Mario games, uh, Philips acquired the licenses for um, the Nintendo IPs. So there were some uh, Zelda games and there was a Mario game. And there were actually a bunch of games that were in development and unreleased. Uh, advice to try it out if you're into that. Uh, if you're into games that are broken and you just want to see the history of it all. And besides that there are a few good games that are actually uh, quite playable. Uh, so it's a bit... Um, yeah, what should I say? Uh, it's... It's not a good console in any aspect, but it's just a fun time and it's part of history. So just try it out and try and find the good games on it. There are not many, but you'll always find a couple that are pretty good. But thank you, Mr. Port, for joining the channel. If you want to have more information, you can always contact him through Instagram. It's really cool that he joined me here in the Wicked Cave so we can check out some like CDI. I personally never really experienced it. So another thing I wanted to check out with you guys, just see how are the games. So let's boot up a couple of them and let's see are they actually that bad or good. The first I wanted to check out is Mutant Rampage Body Slam. A beat em up weird looking game. Damn, with body slam. We got a new team on the block. Arcade Classic is a very cool, let's say, game that seems to be having containing Galaga and Miss Pac-Man and some other cool classics. <coughs> All right, so this loading time took freaking forever. But let's have a quick look at the Zelda games and of course the Link games because those are freaking, let's say, epic or horrible that they are basically epic. My boy, this piece is what all true warriors strive for. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. Your Majesty, Ganon and his minions have seized the island of Korodai. Hmm, how can we help? It is written, only Link can defeat Ganon. Do you know that there was also a Dutch spoken version? Listen to it. <laughs> but let's take a close look at the gameplay because when it comes to the intros they are pretty damn bad in my opinion but when it comes to the gameplay it's not going to be any better under attack by the evil forces of Ganon. I'm going to Gamelon to aid him. But father, what if something happens to you? Bowser! Dear pesky plumbers, the Koopalings and I have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom. The princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels. Please come in your way. I 
also have this game called The Apprentice and it was pretty damn cool. I can tell, in my opinion, this is an absolutely hidden gem when it comes to two dimensional adventure games. <laughs> But when it comes to the Philips CDI, there are so many hidden gems on them. Are they any good? That is of course something you need to decide. And overall, I think it's a very cool novelty, but in my opinion, it's way too expensive to collect nowadays. And again, it depends on how far you want to go into this rabbit hole. If you're looking at the Zelda Link games, most of them are becoming crazy expensive. Thank you all for watching. Also, thank you Port for joining me here on the channel. And it would be great if you subscribe, hit the little bell, and I will see you in the next video.